Hello community. Today we are going to talk about Safier 7B. We built a 7 billion model that outperforms a Llama 2 70 billion model and we will use as a base model the Mistral 7B model. So here we go. You know Mistral 7B. This is here the research paper from October 10th, 2023. And you know Mistral 7B outperforms the Llama 2 13B model and also the Llama 2 13B jet model. If you want to learn about Mistral 7B, these are the two recommended videos for you. Now, this week was announced that there is a Mistral 7B model that even outperforms the Llama 2 70B model. And I would say no way that a 7B model outperforms a 70B model, but this was done by Louis Tunstall from Hugging Face, one of the Wizards of Hugging Face. So let's dive in, let's see how he built his model. Now in a post he said, there's a simple recipe to train a 7B model to outperform the Llama 2 70B model on a specific benchmark. There's just two steps. We have a supervised fine tuning of the Mistral 7B model now on a specific data set. And then simply we do here an alignment here of our supervised fine tuning model to a specific different data set. And we use not PPO, but we use here DPO as here the alignment methodology. And he says, yeah, and I did the benchmark here on LMSYS, the benchmark by them. You remember in my last video I showed you they have different categories, writing, humanities, STEM, extraction, coding, mathematic, reasoning, and role play. And they give you here an overall, if you want, radar graph to understand about the performance in each sector. Now, having done this, he shows now that here the new Safir, let's call it Turquoise model, compared to the Mistral 7B and the Llama 2 70B model, outperforms Llama 70B in almost all categories except two. Interesting. So let's have a look at this super hyper-tuned Mistral 7B model that we now called Safir 7B. Now, the explanation is easy. At first step is we take the classical Mistral 7B model that we know and we love, and we do a supervised fine tuning with a specific data set, and the data set is our UltraJet data set. I will explain this data set in a second. And we end up with a supervised fine tuned model of Mistral 7B given this data set. Great. Second step is we align this model now with a DPO algorithm, not the PPO, the DPO, the direct optimization with another data set. And this data set tells us, hey, this is the way I want you to behave as a model. And this second step is here what I call the big alignment of the behavior of the model. You show here the model, hey, this is the way you should answer. You should behave to queries by the user. And when we do this with the DPO algorithm, we end up with safe here. Great, so simple. It gets even more simple. Because those are people and, and wizards from Hugging Face, they use, of course, the Hugging Face Transformer Reinforcement Learning. And you notice, I've showed you this, the supervised fine-tuning trainer from Hugging Face and a completely integrated DPO trainer on Hugging Face. Ready, scripts are ready, you just have input parameters, and you go. And they say they are total compute costs to create safe here. So this super Mistral 7B was just eight hours on 16 8 A100 NVIDIA data center GPUs, cost hugging face about $500. And they say for the alignment methodology, they found that the DPO mechanism to be far, far more stable than PPO. Great. So for Ben, for my younger viewers, what is a PPO? A proximal policy optimization here is an advanced reinforcement learning algorithm aims to optimize the policy in a more stable and efficient manner than the traditional policy gradient methods. It was developed here by OpenAI. Have a look at this. 
And this was just the very beginning because, as you see, four months ago, I have this video that now the PPO is substituted by the DPO. And if you want to have a deep understanding between the different methodologies, this is the video for you. If you want to code here, this reinforcement learning on a LAMA2 model, I show you here to code here with PATH, with LoRa in 4-bit here, using here the transformer reinforcement learning with here the DPO mechanism. This is the coding video for you. And if you want to see the whole SFT code implemented here with the Hugging Face Trainer module on a PATH, LoRa, 4-bit, LAMA2 model, this is the video you can follow in detail, just copy the code. Great. So, and then to evaluate the system, Lewis said simply, hey, we use the excellent benchmark from LMSysorg. This multi-turn benchmark evaluates it better than anything else. Great. So what is interesting is not so much the methodology, but the data sets. So let's have a look at the first data set, UltraJet, distributed with a specific license for non-commercial use only. Give you an idea what we are talking about. This is the first data set. You see data. And as you can see, it is here simply an dialogue. First, hey, can you cross training benefit groups like runners? Yes, yes, yes. Answer is cross training can benefit groups like runners in the following ways. Next conversation step. The next answer is that makes sense. I've been wanting to improve my runtime. Yes, and the answer, sure. Here are some strength training exercises that can benefit runners. And you have a conversation going on. This is here the main input from UltraJet. Now, where does this conversation come from? They have a special characteristic in their data set, four points. They use real world data as input. So they go to Wikidata and Wikipedia. And they absorb here the real world data and the relevance. So they take the Wikidata entities, the frequency that it happens in the Wikipedia article. So they add here this layer of semantic richness and real world applicability. So they focus here on the real world data. Then, of course, they use your chat GPT or GPT-4. So one LLM model adds in the training of another. We know this. As I've shown you, we have here a multi-turn dialogue, a multi-turn conversation, question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. And they really do a lot of evaluation and they focus on the quality of their data sets. Great. Now, in their research paper, if you read it, you'll find out by Tsinghua University that, careful, this is a purely synthetic data set. So we have here two separate chat GPT models and they do a conversation and this conversation is recorded. So one chat GPT plays the role of the user to generate the query and the other chat GPT instance generates the response to this query. So a purely synthetic data set. But they do it in a different way. And this is the interesting part. They have three sectors or three main points to ensure here a data diversity. As I've showed you, they take here the data from real world entities, from Wikidata, Wikipedia, and so on. And they use here this real world connex in the first step. So ChatGPT is used to generate here comprehensive topics. Those topics are then broken down in subtopics. For each subtopic, 10 questions are ten generated. And for each question is further extended to 10 more questions. So you see we go down a tree and we end up with about 500,000 questions as the opening line. Second, we have here text material from user instruction. And then we use JetGPT here simply is used to generate a diverse range of instruction for each type. And we take here the C4 corpus here for translation, summarization, and pure Q&A. And with this approach, they show that they can really have here a high quality data set that outperforms other data sets. Interesting. Now, Lewis in his application told us, hey, 
For our supervised fine tuning, we used UltraChat, this data set, which consists of about 1.6 million dialogues generated by ChatGPT. We originally trained it on all the data in this data set, but found that the resulting model had an annoying personality. So we filtered this down to about 200,000 examples that focus on helpfulness. I will show you this step in a minute. So you see, it was not that the complete data set was really helpful, but with a specific subset of 200,000 examples, they did the supervised fine tuning of the Mistral 7B model. Step one, check, done. Go to here, the GitHub repo, UltraJet, really informative, as you can see here. Data are available, but please notice here the restrictive licensing. Okay, next step, as I told you, now we have here our supervised fine tuning model. Next step is here to use another data set for our alignment algorithm, our DPO. So let's do this. In the instruction, Lewis tells us that for DPO, they used here this ultra feedback data set. Yes, yes, yes. And the completion is ranked. Give him a score and let's have a look at this. Now, ultra feedback, I couldn't find it license, but since it's also based on the ultra data set, which has a non-commercial license, you will see it uses a lot of other models that are also non-commercial. So please add here all other legal restrictions from all LLM that they used or you will use because this is here a very open question. Let's formulate it in this way. What they do in three simple sentences. They create a really large scale and fine grained and a diverse reference data set for training here, the reward model and critic model here, exactly what we use it here for a big alignment with DPO. They collect about 64,000 prompts from diverse resources. And I just showed you here UltraChat, and this is one of their resources. Also, you know here, so share GPT or Evolve Instruct or Flan, of course, from Google. So they take here their prompts from a lot of different resources. And then they use these prompts to query here multiple LLMs. The LLMs you know, I'll show you a list in a second. And they generate four different responses for each prompt. And this means in total, they have about 256,000 samples generated. And these samples they call ultra feedback. So again, we have here a complete synthetic data set with a real complex legal background structure. Please take this into consideration. And let's have a look at the models that they used. They say they set up a pool of 17 LLMs. The commercials, GPT-4, BART, ChatGPT, everything under the Llama family, and a lot of non-Llama series. So you can add here your preferred LLM, so a set of 17 models. And these models they, they use now for the query. So for Ben, they just choose here, it's cherry picking, they look here for the best answer for the best models given specific problem prompts. So they look what model has here the best or the most helpful prompt, and this is what they select. Pure cherry picking of a synthetic level. Here we are now in GitHub. We are ultra feedback. Let's have a look at this. As you can see, ultra feedback has also models, but we are only interested in the data set. So a large scale, fine grained diverse preference data set. You know all of this model sampling. What I want to show you is an example that you get a feeling what this is. Here we have it, a data set format. So, for example, you have an instruction. I'm going to Cairo in June of this year, thinking of four to five days. What are the best things I could do? And then you just ask here different randomly sampled models from the pool. Falcon 40B, GPT-4, StarChat, and Wizard LM for an answer. And this is exactly what you get. So now in the completion from the four models, you have here the Falcon model, 
and you have here a chosen system prompt from the category helpfulness you say hey asn ai assistant ensure your response offers the perfect blend of your accuracy positivity and intrigue strive to be educational while keeping the user engaged and whatsoever and then you get an official response by the falcon 40b model and here you have the response cairo is a city is something for everyone best things to do is visit the pyramid and this and do this and do this and do that and crazy and now you have an answer and then you can rank it so you see the final example of a data set is here user i'm going to cairo yes 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 and then you have different answers that are ranked for specific categories like helpfulness or politeness or correctness so this here is the answer from falcon 40b this is the answer by gpt4 this is the answer by star chat and this is the answer by wizard lm so you see this is the way you build up here your specific data set and if you say how we do now the ranking this is easy they give you here the example you just go to here the main python file and here you have now your principles you have four principles helpfulness harmlessness honesty and verbalized calibration or if you want truthfulness so and you see here you have now an example of possible system categories so for helpfulness as an ai assistant it is your job to ensure the information you provide to the users accurate current and relevant yes 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 so you see this is some easy to follow prompts given your specific category so what are the lessons that i learned from this so answering the question how can a 7 billion free trainable parameter llm perform like a 70 billion model start with the best small llm that you can get this is currently mistral 7b then interesting for me to learn don't learn here on human source original data but already used some optimized dialogue conversation data for the benchmark and those conversation data are synthetic data sets generated by the best and biggest llms plus have a look for the quality of these synthetic data sets because this is one of the most crucial points for the performance increase of your llm and what i learned align now here your behavior that you want how the model behaves in its answer structure with dpo instead of the classical ppo algorithm and if you do this and this is what we learned from lewis now he says hey this is the recipe from a 7b model to a 70b model and you see it is really amazing the performance increase in quite a lot of the subfields here of our benchmark data set except interestingly for mathematics and reasoning which is clear because these are conversation data that were synthetically generated by other llms let me see here very generally llms are not really perfect for mathematics or reasoning so if you have your conversation data of llms i kind of understand that now in math and in reasoning this kind of training data does not lead to an increase in the conversational structure and in the conversational performance in math and reasoning so even this makes sense now so here you have it a simple recipe to get your 7 billion free trainable parameter to outperform a 70 billion free trainable parameter model interestingly learn quite a lot would be great to see you in my next video.